So many of you have seen my tea videos, and I actually have a video where I show you my entire tea cabinet, and this is one of the teas that I have there. And I don't remember if I mentioned this in the video, but one of my favorite ways to have this tea, which is, um, it's, I mean, themed after uh, My Little Pony character, and we'll get to that in a minute, but um, one of my favorite ways to have this tea is to have it cold, but a lot of find a lot of people find that it's kind of a hassle to uh, boil a kettle and make a cup of tea and then wait for it to cool down. And I mean, it's difficult enough to wait for a hot cup of tea to cool down before drinking it, much less to try and make iced tea. Which is why um, today I'm going to teach you guys how to make cold brew tea, uh, or at least how I make it. Um, and I usually just make it in small teapots, but it's been a hot enough summer that I've been craving cold brew, so I'm gonna make a whole picture of it. Now, before I get into that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's so good about cold brew tea, especially in relation to, um, other teas. And, let's see, why don't I do this while I sift through the tea a little bit. So, cold brew is different because rather than steeping it hot, you steep it cold. And that takes a lot longer than hot tea does. But in the process, you're extracting a different chemical imbalance, or chemical balance, sorry, from the tea. And this chemical balance, the cold water brings out less caffeine and less bitterness. So if you're kind of, if you find yourself drinking tea and finding it really bitter, and you like iced teas like at restaurants a little bit better because of that, like that might be part of it, the cold water. And this is actually like a thing, like cold brewing does this. So if you make hot tea, and cool it down, it's just going to taste like a hot, uh, like a cold version of the hot tea. But if you cold brew it, it's going to taste a little different. So not only less caffeine and less bitter, but it also is going to have a slightly different flavor profile. And this is especially going to be the case for more complex teas. Let me show you a bit of what this looks like. I don't know how well the camera picks this up. There's a lot of oranges in there and a lot of, yeah, my lighting's not quite picking that up, but trust me, it's really pretty. Um, it's also another popular way of making iced tea is sun tea, and cold brew is actually way safer than sun tea. And this is because if you think about it, having a pitcher like this of tea, so you're thinking water, you're thinking sugar, out in the sun, outside, is in, in the heat too, because like it is getting kind of warm, but it's not quite as hot as hot tea. And the point of this is, you know, it becomes a little bit warmer than room temperature and you add ice cubes to cool it down, and the, thus iced tea. Well, that invites microbes into the tea. Like, you can imagine a pitcher of tea sitting in the sun, gathering uh, microbes and stuff, so. Cold brew sits in your fridge instead, and usually um, for either part of a day to overnight, depending on how much you need to steep it. So, first step. My first step is actually, I need to figure out how many cups of this I'm going to make because uh, for those of you who make a lot of tea know, how much tea you put into it, how much of the tea leaves, depends on how much you are making. So I'm using this cup as a measuring tool. Uh, just off screen there's a sink over there that I'm going to pour out cups and pour into here. And 
I also thought that would be a much more interesting sound than just straight up, uh, <laughs> straight pouring water into the pitcher. So, there we So that's one. I don't know if you can hear the cup being filled up with a sink hissing, but. That's two cups. That's three cups. Four cups. That's five cups. That's six cups. seven cups. Oh, funny. Seven cups of tea also happens to be the name of a website that I have talked to you guys about quite a bit that is uh, centered around um, de-stressing and basically people like me go on the website and talk to people who need someone to talk to and you know people who are stressed people who are having relationship problems and it's sort of like having someone to vent at or you know especially if you can't afford to see a therapist sometimes it can be quite good anyway that's something that I always talk about and always leave a link there in the description for you guys because mental health resources are an important thing to me but um, that's not entirely relevant to this video I didn't intend to put a plug there, I just found it funny that this pitcher can create seven cups of tea. Okay, so now we know how much to put in. And now I can put this, which I'm putting our tea leaves in. In there, and that. Oh, that might get a bit full. Oh, oops. No, there you go. There you go. So. Let's hope this is secure and not going to fall, and then I can pour. So you need one, approximately one and a half times your normal amount of tea. Um, and so, you know, normally one teaspoon, so let's see, one and a half times seven. So that's seven maybe 10. 10 sounds about right. I don't want to put too much in there. Another cool thing that I got is Tivana has this one perfect cup of tea. This is, like, it's essentially a teaspoon measure. I was given this as a gift by uh, my cousin, actually. He knows how much I like tea. Um, but it does mean that I no longer have to, like, grab the teaspoon that we have <laughs> for measuring out baking ingredients if I want to make tea, which is awesome. I like having a teaspoon that's specifically meant for tea and nothing else because like if I use the teaspoon to measure out say oil or something and then I haven't washed it and then I want to make tea then I have to wash it in order to make tea. Anyway, so let's measure out 10 teaspoons of this.
since I don't know if you guys can really tell but it's the way I did this there's already water in here so it's sort of floating on the top so I'm kind of gonna press it down and stir it around so that oops just to be sure that it properly because so what I should have actually done is put the tea leaves in first <laughs> first and then done that. Oh boy. So I'm really hoping that this doesn't fall. There we go. And while that begins to steep, you're not going to see the water change color anytime soon, but um, tomorrow when it's done, or yeah, when it's done, I don't know if I'm going to get this uploaded tonight or if it won't be uploaded till tomorrow morning, but, um, anyway, I will post on my Facebook page, which I also have linked in the description, a picture of what this looks like when it's finished, and probably also talk a little bit about how it tastes differently, because, so this tea, I had hot before. It's been a long time since I've had it cold, and I didn't have very much of it the first time, but I remember liking it more. I can talk a little bit about what I remember, but I don't have a full enough memory of what it tasted like cold. But, um, you know, because I haven't made any of this uh, tea cold brew this summer yet. But, um, so this is, so Dagio does a series, I've talked about this in a couple of other tea videos, where fans will choose, like, characters or things in fandom that they like and create teas that are themed after them. So, My Little Pony is something that, you know, I have a lot of young cousins who really like it, I've watched it with them, and it's a pretty cute series, and I don't know, I like having conversations with kids about shows they like and this is one that I I'm really glad that this show is around it's a good show for young girls and a good show in general I guess uh, Derby Hoofs is a sort of fan favorite type of pony not one of the main characters but um so this tea was made for her and it's described online as being a rich nutty tea with a, fr with a flip side of fruity flavor also described as tasting kind of like an apricot nut muffin. Um, those of you who are sort of big fans of the series might get this better than I do, because as much as I like the show, I don't always get all of the references. I know that, that the muffins are a Derby Hooves thing. I feel like there must be like a line where she talks about how much she likes muffins or something. I would actually describe it as the reverse, though. I feel like uh, when I had it hot, the fruit came first, and then the nut, even though a lot of other reviewers said that they tasted the nut and then fruit. Uh, but it has, it's a black tea with honeybush apricot, so honeybush is sort of like an herbal tea kind of thing, but it's not technically a tea, but it kind of is. Anyway, um, it has, so it's black tea, though primarily honeybush apricot, with hazelnut, cream, apricots, uh, marigolds, I think maybe a little bit of apple flavor in there, but it's still very largely like apricot and hazelnut are the two primary flavors going on here. So I thought that this would make a really good cold brew tea because, um, I don't know, I really like fruit, fruity teas when they're cold. And that was one of the weird things, having it hot, is it was weird to have something fruity while it was hot. I think the only tea that I've had fruity and hot that I've really liked that way have been like, sort of like, 
peach green teas and have thin, um, and like the orange spice type of teas anyway. So that's how I decided that I wanted to try and make this cold brew. So you can kind of already see it all steeping in and it sort of infusing, but it does actually take quite a while, which is the downside to um, cold brew teas, is it takes it can take anywhere from four to ten hours, depending on what tea you have. So white teas will brew the quickest. Those will take probably closer to four hours. Um, then green teas and oolong teas, depending on whether they're sort of leaf teas or like the oolong, per any sort of pearl tea, like jasmine pearls or green pearl pearls or oolong pearls are going to take longer. So like they may take closer to say, and I'm just throwing out numbers here, may take closer to eight hours if they're pearls or like seven or maybe six hours if they're leaves. And then herbal teas and black teas take the longest time. And especially with an herbal tea, which this is more, um, this one is more uh, honey bush than it is black tea. Like herbal teas don't, I don't want to say they don't get bitter because it does depend on your tea, but like I know this is kind of one of those teas that doesn't get bitter, and especially since uh, cold brewing makes it less likely for your tea to get bitter, like I feel like, I don't know, like if you intend to steep it for 10 hours and it goes for 11, it's not the end of the world. It'll probably still taste fine. Um, but I also know that there are people who are far into cold brewing who have their exact uh, time frames figured out of how long they decide that they want to steep it. So, so yeah, and then you do that and then you strain it or take the leaves out in this case and then serve it. So yeah, um, that's how you make cold brew tea. Like I said, I'll update you guys um, either tomorrow or today if I end up <laughs> not uploading this until tomorrow. We'll see how the video actually turns out. But yeah, and then I will let you know. So if you are interested in, especially if you're interested in this tea and knowing how it turns out you know, more than just a how-to, then go on down to my Facebook page and check it out. Okay. And I think that's it for today. And happy Happy team, and I will see you guys next time.